As the European Union grows in size and new official languages are added, the EU's translating and interpreting services have to stretch accordingly. But calls for cuts to the EU's administrative costs and the number of translators and interpreters available at a given time are fueling concern that the EU's highly acclaimed multilingual communication service could be at risk of dropping standards. The European Union is the only institution in the world running on as many as 23 official languages. Every day hundreds of thousands of high-level talks take place and key information is exchanged. And at the center of it all are thousands of interpreters. Not only do they facilitate communication, but they support the democratic foundations of the European Union. In European Parliament, we have directly elected people. And which means that you cannot elect people for their knowledge. You elect them because they are capable to represent you, because they have the trust of the, their electorate. And so we have to give them the tools to be on the same level. Highly trained, skilled and paid, interpreters have become valuable commodities in an age of globalization. And their job isn't easy. First, you have to have patience and not anticipate where the speaker is going. Then you have to analyze. You also need a sound understanding of your mother tongue because you need to be a very good communicator. You can't search for your words. I have two passive languages and two active languages. Normally, when we talk about, free about interpreters, we imagine a, a person with three or four tongues, which is not literally the case. We have plenty of passive languages. Passive languages are languages we are able to interpret out of, from, into our active languages. But among more than 600 staff interpreters and around 3,000 freelancers, not everyone is used efficiently. During the last three years, almost 16 million euros went to waste due to late requests or cancellations when interpretation wasn't needed at the EU. One Dutch MEP thinks the solution is an on-demand system. In my working group on agriculture, within my political group, I'm the only sp person who's a, who's a Dutch speaker. Uh, but this is very technical, uh, very technical discussions often. And I know it's better to speak German to my German colleagues and French to my French colleagues or speak English, and I do. So in those cases, I don't need three interpreters to wait uh, for me to pick up my headset to need translation because I will use the English and the German and the French that is spoken. Well, they they, they do cost, they are good, but they do cost more than a thousand euros a day. So in that case, I could have sa saved the parliament uh, 3,000 euros easily. Concern with on-demand interpreting is that it may lead to a privileged treatment of popular languages. English, French, German, Spanish, Italian. There in each meeting you have more than one MP speaking the language. So they would be assured to have the language because somebody else could ask it even if they were not present. What happens with all the other languages, where often you have only one representative? Chatter in EU corridors of potential cutbacks in interpreting are also fueling fears about the future of the profession. Interpreters, at the level we want them, are a very, very rare merchandise, especially for certain languages. We give money in order to go to the um, uh, capitals of all the states and find the right universities to train them. And then, if these people, who are very rare birds, are convinced that this profession doesn't have a future, then they do something different. Many agree greater efficiency is necessary, but the EU's interpreting staff are set to defend their jobs and the right of every language to have an equal say in Europe. Sandra Gottman for JN1 in Strasbourg.